All right, what's up, guys? Uh, we are doing the Chapter 5 test review, and this is number two that we got on Friday. So we're going to go through this one, and we'll talk about how to do each question, the formula is needed, and then remember your test is tomorrow. So here we go. All right, number one, the angles of the Pentagon and the diagram below are labeled. Find the values of X and Y. Find the number of degrees and the measure of the missing angle. So Y here is an exterior angle. It's the only exterior angle we have. And we have all the ones inside, and these are all interior angles, okay? So what I need to do is use the formula for the interior to get the sum, which is the measure of all of them to add it together, okay? And then use that to create an equation to solve. So the formula for the sum of the interior angles is 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. So this one's a pentagon, which has five sides, so it's 180. Five minus two, or 180 times three, which is 540 degrees. So if I take my equation, which is 12x plus 96 plus 142 plus 70 plus, and then we have 20x minus 24, that should equal 540 degrees. So we have uh, 32x, and then we add our like terms together here, and that will give us a whole lot. This is where we're going to need to break out our calculator here. Should have planned ahead. And I'm going to get 284, so plus 284 is equal to 540. So I take away the 284 from both sides. I'm going to get 32x is equal to 256. We divide out by 32. And that gives us 8. So it says find the measures of the missing angles. There's a few of them here. Okay. First one is 12x. So 12 times 8 is going to be 96. The second one is 20, 20 times 8 minus 24, which is 160 minus 24. And that's going to be 136. All right, and the last one we need is this one. Now, I, what I should know is that these two angles right here are supplementary. So um, 180 minus 136 is going to be 44. That's the measure of that exterior angle right there. So um, y plus 10 is equal to 44. That means y is going to equal 34. We got y. I got 96, 136. And then 44, there's the measures of my missing angles, and I'm good to go. All right, number two, uh, the diagram below the hexagon, and we're trying to find the measure of this angle right here, right, E, A, B, which is that guy. So what we need to do is get this angle E first, and then since this is regular, remember what that means is that all the sides are congruent and the angles are congruent, okay? So... Uh, we're going to know that this is isosceles because these two sides are equal. It's a hexagon. We want the measure of the interior angle. So we're going to do 180, n minus 2. That's the sum. This time we're going to divide it by n. So we couldn't do that before because these angles weren't the same. Here they are, so we can divide by the number of sides. So it's 180 times 5 minus 2. How about 6 minus 2? Divided by 6. This is 720 divided by 6. And that's 120 degrees. So if I know that this angle right here, E, is 120 degrees, what's left for this? And really, it's just 180 minus 120, and then take half of that, because we are um, we have two congruent angles. And so that's going to be 60 divided by 2, or 30 degrees. So each of these is 30, and then I know my answer. So the measure of angle E, A, B 
is equal to 30. Okay, uh, number of degrees in the measure of one interior and one exterior angle of a regular octagon. So let's do the interior first. So the interior is the sum. That's 180 times the number of sides minus 2. Remember, this is really the number of triangles. Okay. And um, if we're doing 8, 8 minus 2 is really 6. It's 180 minus 6. And then we're going to go to work. We're going to go to work here. So 180 times 6 is 1080. That's the sum. So what we want is we want 180 n minus 2 over n. So this is the sum. This is the measure of 1. So this is really 1080 divided by 8. And that's 135. Now, if we're doing the, re the exterior, we could just do 180 minus that. Um, remember, for the exterior, the sum is 360. So the measure of one angle is 360 over n. So if I just do 360 over 8, that's going to equal 45 degrees. And this is my answer for this one. So that's one exterior, interior. Okay. Uh, for number four, we said before we're going to change this rectangle to parallelogram. Obviously, this is not a rectangle. Or it is a, it is a, a parallelogram. And you can just use the same property here. Um, I know the measure of angle A, B, C, which is this angle, is 75 degrees. What's the measure of angle 2? And I know one, angle 1 is 37. Remember that opposite angles are congruent. So that's the formula we're going to use. So we're going to use 37 plus angle 2 is equal to 75. We'll take away 37 from both sides. And then angle 2 is going to equal the difference. And I believe that is 38. And it is. And there's your measure of angle 2. Okay? That's it. For a rectangle, it would be a little bit different. And if we were looking for this guy down here, which could be a question, um, like if this was angle 1, or let's say 3 and 4, and I knew angle 3 was 37 instead, we know it's not, but let's say it is, remember that this angle is supplementary with a 75. So 180 minus 75 is 105. That's what this adds to. And then you can figure out angle 4 from there. All right. Page two. Nope. That's page three. Page two. All right. We got a trapezoid. We're trying to find the measure of angle A. Now, to do, uh, to do this, what we really need to do here is get X. What we should remember if that is these two lines are parallel, this is my transversal. These two angles right here have to add to 180 degrees. All right, so our equation is going to be 12x minus 4 plus 7x plus 13 is equal to 180. If you hear any uh, special guests in the background, that's the kiddos. I don't know if you can hear them out, but they're upstairs. So this is 19x plus 9 is equal to 180. We're going to take away 9 from both sides which leaves us with 19x is equal to 171. We'll divide out by 19. And that leaves us with 9. So we want the measure of A, since you know that x is uh, 9. We just do 6 times 9, which is equal to 54. So angle A is equal to 54 degrees. And we're done with that one. Okay. All right. In the diagram below, we need to have a rhombus. This angle is 48 degrees. We're trying to figure out the measure of angle B, A, B. Okay. Um, keep in mind that both sides, all, or all the sides of the rhombus are equal, which means that uh, these two angles have to be equal to each other. So if that's 48, and this is 48, um, which equals 96, then this angle C, has to equal 180 degrees with it. That's a little leftover part. So 180 minus 96 is going to leave us with um, 
work here, right? 84 degrees. And so that's what the measure of this angle is. Remember, uh, don't go with looks like. So, you know, if this is supposed to be like, it looks like it's uh, uh, obtuse, but we're sticking with the 84. So if this is 84, remember the opposite angles are equal to each other. So then the measure of angle D A B is also going to equal 84 degrees. Okay. Number seven, isosceles trapezoid ABCD. It's not given to you, so make sure you draw the picture. So it's going to be drawn out like this, um, sort of like this. This should be kicked out a little bit more, but you get the idea. So remember, in an isosceles trapezoid, these two sides are equal. These pairs of base angles are equal to each other. And last but not least, the diagonals that cut across these uh, lovely segments are also equal, okay? And so if this is uh, A going around in a circle, right? B, C, D, just check to see which angle is supposed to be um, obtuse. If, if it's given to you, then I'll tell you which goes where. But um, for our purposes, it, it doesn't matter for this question. A, C, and B, D are going to be equal to each other, okay? And then we're just going to plug in. So 12X minus 32 equals 5X plus 17. We take away the 5X from both sides. 7x minus 32 is equal to 17. We add the 32. 7x is equal to 49. Divide out. And that means x is going to be 7. We also want to find the length of AC. So 12 times 7 minus 32 is equal to. And then we'll be good to go. And that's 52. And if you want to check... You can always plug it into this. 35 plus 17 is also 52, so we know we're, we're, we're good there. And this is, once again, AC. Okay, solving for the, uh, the variable in the parallelogram, so I'm trying to find x. Remember that these um, segments bisect each other, so we have two different equations. So it's either um, 4x is equal to 8, all right, which means if we divide it by 4, x is going to equal 2, or we have 5x plus, sorry, equals 3x plus 4. Take away the 3x, we're going to get 2x is equal to 4, and then when we divide out, we're also going to get x is equal to 2. So either uh, either diagonal will get you the correct answer there. All right, in a rhombus, remember the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, so that makes this a right triangle. So you can either do 180 is equal to 90 plus the sum of the other two angles. All right, so here's your two sets of angles. Or if we really get rid of the 91st, like we're already using 90 degrees in our triangle, that means there's only 90 left. And then if we add the two angles together, it's got to equal 90 degrees. And this should be minus 13, not plus 13, so just be careful there, all right? We combine like terms, we get 90 equals, we're going to get 9x minus 18. We'll add 18 to both sides. We'll get 108 is equal to 9x. We'll divide out. And we should get, I believe, 12 for this one is equal to x. Um, you guys, can you see that? Way down there. All right. And there's, uh, there's that guy. We got two more here. So this rhombus right here, once again, all sides are equal. So... Just 3x plus 10 is equal to um, x plus 58. Take away x from both sides. 2x plus 10 is equal to 58. Take away the 10 from both sides. 2x is equal to 48. Divide out by 2, and then x is going to equal 24. Go into the other guy. Uh, remember that the diagonals here in the rhombus bisect the angles. So these two sets of angles here are equal. So this is also equal to 2x plus 10, all right? Um, and then once again, these are uh, perpendicular. So it's the same thing we did the last question where um, these two angles are part of a right triangle. So we can just do 2x plus 10 plus 3x plus 5 is equal to 90. Or if you want to do plus 90 equals 180, go for it. Um, we're going to do 5x plus 15 
is equal to 90. We'll subtract out the 15. We'll get 5x is equal to 75. And then we will divide out by 5 to get our answer, which should be 15. And there's that variable right there. OK, number 9. So we got ourselves, and remember, I warned you guys, make sure you know how to do this question, right? So we'll go through this again. So we have uh, statements, reasons, and then we're looking for keywords here, so, right? So we know this is a rectangle. So keep in mind, we have the six properties of a parallelogram. Um, we also have the, the two for a rectangle. So there's eight properties we can use here, right? So, um, we're going to label for ourselves so we know that BF, this segment here, is equal to CG, this segment over here. And we know this, once again, this is a rectangle. So our, tri our goal is to show that this triangle inside in here, right, this one in the middle here, is isosceles. So remember, we talked about this in class. My goal is to really get these two base angles to be equal. What I'm actually paying attention to, however, are these two triangles right here. If I can get these two triangles to be um, equal to each other. You guys can see it. We can bust out some CPCTC and uh, we'll be on our way. So what's the same in these triangles? Remember, keep in mind it's a rectangle. We have the opposite sides so they're congruent. We're gonna get these right angles so we prove that they're congruent. And then we're gonna add this uh, segment FG to make this uh, segment down here, BG, and then uh, FC. That's gonna be our goal. Okay, so first one we're gonna do is given. Second thing we're gonna do is we'll start working through the triangle. So we can do A, B is congruent to D, C. Some of you guys like to do this in two steps, like, sep like separate steps um, where you do the sides and then the angles. Some people like to just do them together and say like in a rectangle, opposite sides are congruent and all angles are whatever. You know, 90 degrees and equal, it's up to you. Um, but that's what we're gonna use. So rectangles have or in a rectangle if you want to say that opposite sides congruent three we're going to do angle b and i'm going to do uh congruent this time normally we do 90 and then equal this is going to combine both of these and i'm just going to say um in a rectangle so it's just like i say for 90 degrees in a rectangle all angles are 90 degrees and I'm just gonna throw this on, and equal or and congruent, okay? That part right there lets me combine those two steps. So if you like doing, um, you know, angle B plus an angle, and angle C equal 90, and then substitution, go for it. If you wanna do, or transitive, if you wanna do this, you can also do it that way, okay? Once again, I'm explaining 90 degrees, and then saying equal, so I'm combining those two steps together, all right? Um, number four, we're gonna do FG, is congruent to FG. Remember, we're gonna add FG to both sides of that given there. So we have to say it's congruent to itself first. Sounds kind of silly, but otherwise we won't know that we get um, a congruent amount when we add it. So BF plus FG is congruent to FG plus CG here. Okay. Five. This is the addition property of equality. Six, we're going to actually tell you what BF plus FG is, which is BG. See, that's equal to the other side, which is FC. And this is really segment addition property. If you put down substitution, we'll allow it because you're substituting the sum in for the add-ins here. Okay. And now we have enough to get the triangles congruent, so that's step seven. So triangle ABG is congruent to triangle DCF. This is side angle side. Remember, if you have a tough time seeing what's congruent, take and draw this triangle over again. And then as you're labeling it for yourself, okay, you'll be able to visually see, like, look at, I got this, these two sides are equal. I got that 90 degree angle, and then we added on this piece on the bottom, and there's my side angle side. Eight, we needed to get the base angles here in the triangle equal, so that's angle E, F, 
G congruent to angle E G F. If you want to use A G B and D F C, it's fine. It's the same angle. Just three letters on the lines, right outside the vertex, and then back outside. That's C P C T C, and the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then the last one here, we're going to say that triangle E G F. If you can see the E G F there, is isosceles and we're just going to explain why how do we know it's isosceles it's got two congruent angles so we're just going to say the triangle has two congruent angles we want to say base angles are congruent that's fine or in an isosceles triangle two two angles are congruent also okay all right um and then we're going to our second page here so we have uh, proof number 10 just writing this down right there. Give me one minute mark for this proof. I'll include that to you guys. All right. In the diagram below of quadrilateral ABCD, so for our givens, there's no like specifically listed givens, but what we know already is we have a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral. And remember, if you don't know what the givens are, just take this whole thing and write it down. That way you're not missing anything. You'll have everything stated. We also know that AD is congruent to BC. We know angle DAE is congruent to angle BCE. And we also have that line segments AC, DB, and FG, G intersect at E. And my goal is to show and this is one other thing, right? Look at the proof statement. If we have triangles, let's highlight them. Let's talk about them. That triangle right there, kind of hard to see, is congruent to this triangle right here. Okay. So CEG and then AES. You guys got it now? All right. So uh, what do we know? We already have AD, which is this whole segment equal to BC, that whole segment. And we have angle DAE. So let's do these in black. That is congruent to that, right? We have this angle right here, and here's that angle up there. All right, and then we have all these line segments intersecting. So um, I can see a few things from the diagram that are sticking out. Number one, my vertical angles. So we can put that down. So vertical, don't put down vertical angles or congruent randomly, okay? No good. So uh, we're gonna say angle F E A. Remember, can't say angle E because there's a whole bunch of angle E's. And then angle G E C, and the letters are corresponding. All right, and then we got vertical angles are congruent. Oh, wait, so now we have two angles congruent. So we got to have a side. So it can be any of the sides because we can do angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So um, I need to know like a set of sides that are equal to each other. Um, right now, what you might think is since these are equal, maybe I can do some subtracting of like BG and BF. But I don't know that those, those segments are equal yet. So I can't just subtract these two away from the whole and get these two parts equal. That's not how I can't do that. But what I can do, and this is where um, we're going to use our, if you see it, you'll see it right now, we can use our Z going across here, right? Here's the letter of the day. And I can use that to get these two lines to be parallel. And so if I can get these two lines to also be parallel, now I have one set of sides that's congruent and parallel, which makes it a parallelogram. And then these two lines, are actually the diagonals, and if they're they we know that they bisect each other, that means we're going to be able to show that this line is congruent to that line, and we'll have the triangles congruent. So step three is to get our lines parallel. So AD is parallel to BC. Once again, uh, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. I may add the word when here. 
So that happens when the alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I have the lines parallel and congruent, so I can say that ABCD is a parallelogram. And we're going to throw the old in a parallelogram, right, in the property. One pair of sides is congruent and parallel. And now I can do my bisecting diagonals. So I have AE, which is congruent to EC, EC, and then that's going to be in a parallelogram. If you're enjoying the silly voices here. Um, I'll try that again. Diagonals uh, bisect each other. All right. And now we have enough to do triangle AEF. Here at the triangle CEG. And this is just angle side angle. And we are done. -zo. And there you go. Oh, don't forget statements and reasons. Okay. Well, let's finish off this worksheet here. We've got a couple multiple choice guys down below. So, number 11 to prove a parallelogram. This is at about the 26, 40 mark. As a rectangle, it is sufficient to show that the boom. So, uh, diagonals are congruent. That will make it a rectangle, so that's okay. Perpendicular to each other, that actually makes it a rhombus, not a rectangle. Opposite sides are congruent. This is just any parallelogram. And adjacent sides congruent is going to be a rhombus. So, we want to go with A. Uh, the other option was that the adjacent angles are 90 degrees. So, that would be the other option, but that's choice A. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular, they bisect each other. And here's a, here's a key thing. They're not equal. All right? Not equal means it can't be a trapezoid. can't be a square. And it can't be a rectangle. We're left with rhombus. All right? If it says perpendicular, then rectangle and trapezoid are out. We're left with these two choices. So whether it's equal or unequal. Quadrilateral must be a square if its diagonals are congruent, which is true. But it could also be a rectangle, so not, not there yet. Sides and angles are congruent. It would be very true. All right. And apparently we're just getting the news that Tyrod Taylor is believed to have not good things going on. Oh, let's continue. Sides and angles congruent, opposite sides and opposite angles are congruent. That's just a parallelogram. The diagonals bisect each other and are perpendicular. That's a rhombus. So we want to go with B, okay? So uh, remember, this is a rectangle or isosceles trapezoid. There you go, Liam, your favorite. Um, the diagonals bisect each other and perpendicular. That's a rhombus. Opposite angles are congruent is a parallelogram. All right. Now, avoided significant injury. All right. Maybe this back came up. So we're going with B. Uh, number 14, the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular and not congruent. So, once again, this is going to be a rhombus. Bringing back number 12. Um, and then, which quadrilateral always has congruent diagonals? A parallelogram does. A trapezoid sometimes does, right? It's, if it's isosceles, then it does. Rhombus and rectangle do not. So, wait a minute. Rhombus and rectangle do. Rhombus is not. Get out of town. This is a sometimes. Parallelograms don't. We're stuck with rectangle. Thanks for following through with this. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and we're done.